Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images and in this short video I'm going to talk about something which I get asked about often as a source of confusion for people when they're getting into printing. It is about media settings and profiles. Do I need media settings? Do I need profiles? Well, actually you need both to print. Now, the printer I've got here is an Epson ET8550, but what I'm saying here is applicable to if I have the Canon Pro 200, 300, Epson P700, 900. They're all similar in this respect. And it goes for other printers as well. It goes for smaller, cheaper printers as well. Um, and therein lies potentially a problem for quality with small printers. One of the reasons I don't really test for photography use uh, smaller printers, smaller than about A3 plus here. As I said, you need both. So what are they? I'll start with media settings. Well, the media setting is essentially the characteristics of the paper. It's its thickness, how it dries, how much ink you can get on it. Now, I, I did a short video just the other day showing how the wrong media type, i.e. the wrong paper, can look absolutely awful. Uh, and I, I had a thin, a, a white, glossy film paper um, that just would not print properly in this uh, ET8550. It wouldn't print in any Canon printer either. It is simply incompatible. But assuming you've got a paper that works, there are all kinds of characteristics of the paper in how ink goes onto it. Now here are two test images and I always say start your printing with known test images. Here's a different one that I use. Uh, this is based on some uh, x rite software um, for profiling. But we're talking about media settings and two papers here. This is a matte art paper. It's quite thickish. It's a matte surface. It's got a nice black on it there from that. That's it. Colours look pretty good. And here is a sort of Baraita style semi-gloss paper. Also quite a thick one. Two nice papers. And I've needed to print those at the appropriate media setting. Now, the media setting, which is found in the driver, in the printer driver settings, is the description of how the paper works, how the printer should address the paper. It has all kinds of stuff in it, so it might include information on how much ink of different colours to put down on the paper. Uh, different papers take different amounts of ink. Um, it's, that's one of the things the media setting says. It also does things like thickness, so it allows you know, differences there. Now, where do you get the media settings? Well. There are the built-in media settings that you'll get with any printer. Uh, they're in the driver. You look at it and you'll see a list of them. You will also see when you load paper into a printer like this, comes up on the screen, asks you what type of media, and you can pick one of the media types to use. Now, I use set the media type here in the printer and on the computer when I'm printing as a bit of a belt and braces approach because I use lots of different papers and it's easy, so easy, well, easier than you think to forget which paper you're using and put the wrong paper in the printer. Now, I don't want to waste 13 inch by 19 inch sheets of paper. So I make a point of setting the media setting here on the printer as well as on the computer. Now, the computer, I set it in the uh, driver. If I'm using the Epson software, I may set it elsewhere. I just wake my screen up again. There we go. And I'll set that elsewhere. Now, that's easy enough to set. What media settings do you use? Uh, it turns out neither of these papers are Epson papers. And I use a wide variety of papers to test. And you want that freedom to choose papers that match what you want to put onto a picture, into a picture where and when you print it. The paper suppliers, the manufacturer, if it's an Epson paper, well, almost certainly you're going to have a setting, a paper setting that matches something in the printer. Now, when you change printers, you may find that some of the media names have changed slightly. 
Uh, better printers tend to have more printer uh, media types for you to use. Um, cheaper printers tend to have less. That's okay if you're using Epson paper in an Epson printer, Canon paper in a Canon printer. You match what there is. What about if there isn't? Um, so if I've got um, glossy XX plus paper, Epson branded, I don't know, they change the names uh, over time, and also in different markets. So I only test papers available in the UK. So I've got this glossy paper, and I look on the screen here, or on the screen on the driver, on the computer, and I see there is no match. It's not there. What do I do? I put something as similar as I can find in it. Now, with this particular printer, because it has a pigment black ink and a dye black ink, there is quite a difference between the media settings and how the inks are applied to the paper. In particular, it makes a difference for prints on matte paper. So I need to get the right setting. The only real setting for this on this printer is Epson VFA Velvet Fine Art. Now, I have got some Velvet Fine Art somewhere and I could run that through and set that. However, I've used the VFA setting on this paper and I uh, can't remember exactly which paper. I've got it written on the back there, uh, too small without the glasses. And I need to actually set the media here. Uh, I've used VFA for my profiling. Ah, profiling, the next bit. Profiles are the characteristics of the ink on the printer, on the paper. They, in a way, they map what you want in your image. That's the, that's the actual image data, not what's displayed on the screen. So they map the image data to what the printer can manage. Think of profiles as an aid to translation. They are a sort of dictionary of colours and brightness and inks. The printer driver takes the colours coming into it and it works out how to place all the tiny ink droplets to make the colours. But that process is characterised by a profile. So a profile is for a particular paper on a particular printer with a particular set of inks. That's one of the reasons that if you put third party inks in your printer, all your profiling is out. Um, now, you might want to make profiles. Now, I make profiles. Um, I use a, a X-Write system um, and produce quite complex profiles. Now, I print this. I measure it with a scanning spectrophotometer. This is a metallic glossy paper, a metallic luster, but the look. It has a very nice sheen to it. It's a very nice paper. Works very well in here. It's not supported by Epson at all. I had to print this out with a correct media setting. Now, I guessed, um, and this is where experience comes in, and uh, also ask the people you get the paper from what media settings they suggest. But I've printed this at an appropriate media setting. I have then run this through the spectrophotometer, run it through the software, and I have created a profile. Now, the profile is applied in the software that you do the printing with. So I, if I was to print this from Photoshop, I would specify the profile in the Photoshop print dialog. Now, depending on what software you're using, it may vary the actual position where you set it up. Uh, this is on a Mac, it will be different slightly on Windows. But the whole principle is that generally the profile is set in the software that you're doing the printing with. So. When I'm printing, if I'm printing this image here on one of these papers, I set the media when I load the paper here. Not essential, but I say I find it helpful. In the printer dialog here, I set the profile for the paper I'm using. And then in the printer driver settings, now that's the one where you set um, how high quality you want and various things like that. That's where you set the media type. And I set an appropriate media type. Now when I make a profile, in the profile name, I include the media type that I used. So that if I use it in six months time, I can look at this and I think, well, this is a profile for this paper 
what media setting did I use? Ah, the profile name tells me the media setting, whatever it was. I think it was premium semi-gloss for this one here. Uh, and that's the setting I will use here and in the printer driver. So that's the two different, that's two different things. So you've got um, profiles, which are set in your application, and media settings, which are set in your driver. Now, that's if you're using software like Photoshop and various other things to print. What about if I'm using something like the Epson print software or even the Canon print software, both of which work very well with their printers. Um, and in those, there is often an option that when you select the media type, the profile is automatically selected as well. Now, in the Epson software and the Canon software, you set both the media and the profile in that bit of software. There are no driver settings to take care of afterwards. All taken care of in that bit of software, either Epson or Canon software. And that looks after that for you. Well, you think, okay, I've set a media type, premium or semi-gloss, but I want to use this paper. Uh, in this instance, I go to one of the menu items there and select a profile to go with it. So. I'm still selecting them separately. I'm selecting a media, I'm selecting a profile, but I'm making sure they're the right ones for it. You might think, well, it would be nice if I could just go, I'm using this paper, sort it for me. Well, you can if you use Epson paper, Epson profiles. However, the flexibility of a printer like this and other printers I've looked at is that you can use any paper you like, well, almost any paper you like, um, and get results that you want from it. And it's a key part of getting really good print quality. So there we have it. A um, couple of other little things I really ought to remind you as well. Sometimes um, for Canon, um, and there are similarities, so Epson have got some stuff as well, you can get combination media settings and profiles. Now the Canon driver, uh, this is the one I've used more often on this, they're called AMX files, and a paper supplier may well supply with their paper an AMX file. Now the AMX file is essentially media settings. It's a new set of media settings. It's possible to alter the range of media settings available on the printer. You'll need to have a look at my detailed reviews as to how to do that though. Um, it's, not a, it's not difficult, but it's not something I can just quickly explain in a video. Um, it, can be, it can be quite complex, very useful, but complex. So I've got an AMX file. I'm just using Canon as an example. Now that can have media settings in it. So we create a media type. So let's say I get a paper from Hanamua and it has an AMX file available for the printer that I want. This is, this is the Canon example. I load that. Depending on how Hannah Mill have made the AMX files, it may or may not contain a profile. If it does contain a profile, then you have the profile and the media settings there, and it becomes an automatic setting again as well. I would say, however, be careful because it's assuming that the profile and the media settings are correct and it only works for one, one printer type. Um, I can see how it could be useful, but there are potential issues with it. But that's another matter altogether going into that. So, and and it, the AMX file approach, and so the Canon Epson have got something similar. Uh, the AMX file approach only works with some applications. So it is of absolutely no use to me printing from uh, uh, printing directly from Photoshop, for example. If I go via Canon software, Canon print software from Photoshop, then it's potentially useful. But if you come across these files, anyone supplying them to you should have comprehensive details of what to do with them, how to install them, how to set them up and things like that. I'll finish off on black and white. Black and white printing is a completely different area in some respects. Now, there's a black and white print done on an art paper. That's the uh, Steps at Wells Cathedral. Um, really, yeah, it's based on a famous uh, photograph from 1905, but I've taken it with a much wider angle lens. Um, I've printed that using the black and white print mode. Now, the black and white print, ABW on Epson printers, uh, Canon's black and white mode, that only needs a media setting. 
in a way, the profile is baked into the software and it takes care of that for you. Now, you can print black and white with a color profile and there is on this test image, there is a black and white test section of the image. However, in general, I found that higher quality results come from using the black and white mode. The black and white mode needs a media setting that is set wherever you're setting the black and white mode. It does not need a profile. So in that case, if software such as Photoshop is asking you for a profile, that's where you say, let printer manage the color. And then you go to black and white and you set the media type and say black and white, no more mention of a profile anywhere. So that covers that. Now I've done a lot more about color management and things and I include it in all my printer reviews and I've covered how to make your own profiles and things like that. Um, it's not a difficult subject but you do need a bit of experience to get it right. Um, so have a follow up there. Please feel free to ask questions on the video. Um, I hope this has been of help. If you find the channel helpful, please subscribe and uh, thank you very much.